10 Nonfiction Books Based on True Life Hauntings Have you ever sat in a movie theater, ready to scare yourself silly with the latest horror movie and felt yourself get chills when you read the prelude, based on a true story? Well, that creepy little warning isn't just for movies. In fact, many of those were adapted from books. From true accounts of demonic possessions and haunted houses to lost and wayward spirits and the people dedicated to documenting the unexplainable, no amount of special effects, creepy soundtracks, and camera tricks can outdo a chilling story written by those who lived through the horror and survived to tell the tale. So, if you're looking for a hair-raising read or two, check out our list of the scariest non-fiction books based on true life hauntings and paranormal cases. Ghost Land, An American History in Haunted Places By Colin Dickey As far as scary goes, this is probably the tamest book on the list. A ghost story, a travel guide, and a memoir all rolled into one. Colin Dickey recounts the many haunted places he's visited, ghost tours he's been on, and tries to make sense of the human obsession with the supernatural based on the social implications and societal context. For example, he attributes many of the tales of southern ghosts to the guilt of slavery and the need to build another evil out of fear that didn't directly implicate those who were guilty of the slave industry. He goes on a journey throughout the US with the same mission, to find the haunted places and delve into their often dark and mysterious pasts, hostage to the devil. By Malachi Martin. You might recognize this name from the Netflix documentary Cross to Bear, based on Malachi Martin who was both a prolific writer on demonology and a Catholic priest who performed exorcisms on the afflicted. He moved from his native Ireland to New York in the 60s and penned 17 books, many of which were critical of the Catholic Church and recounted his bouts of exorcism and battles with demons. This title, in particular, recounts several exorcisms he oversaw during the 60s and 70s, many of which helped become the basis of our modern-day view and practice of demonic exorcism. Hostage to the Devil is still cited as a way to combat the Hollywood view of what an exorcism is and how it works, The Haunted, One Family's Nightmare. By Robert Curran. The Haunted, One Family's Nightmare is the account of an incident that would become famously known as the Smurl Haunting of Pittston, Pennsylvania. The Smurl family claimed to be besieged in their home by a demon for over 10 years during the 70s and 80s. They sought help from demonologists, clergy members, paranormal experts, and local authorities, among those brought in to help were the famous paranormal investigators, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Robert Curran recounts the years the family was under emotional and physical abuse from the demon and also helped pen the made-for-TV movie The Haunted that was based on his book, The Demonologist, The Extraordinary Career of Ed and Lorraine Warren. By Gerald Brittle. If you're a fan of movies and books about demonic hauntings, then you'll already know who Ed and Lorraine Warren are. Recently, they've become something of their own larger-than-life demon fighting heroes, given their own cinematic universe in the form of James Wan's many adaptations of their work. The Warrens are responsible for bringing to national attention the Amityville haunting and also figure in stories such as The Haunting in Connecticut and The Enfield Poltergeist. This book recounts many of their cases, focusing in on the Warrens' unique reliance on religion, it was the only Vatican-ordained, non-clergy demonologist, as they investigated the most prolific hauntings of the late 20th century, the Amityville Horror. By Jay Anson. As you've probably already noticed, Ed and Lorraine Warren are all over this list, and that continues with the best-selling, now famous printed recount of the Amityville Haunting, easily America's most famous haunting. In the middle of the night on November 13, 1974, Robert DeFeo murdered his entire family with a shotgun while they slept in their beds. Later, he would claim voices in his head from a demonic presence in the house told him to do it. A year later, the Lutz family would move in, only to be chased out of the house after a month when they could no longer handle the horrifying haunting they had become victim to. 
This book describes their experiences during the 28 days they lived in the house and became the basis for the famous movie, The Exorcist, by William Peter Blatty. Yes, that's right, the scariest movie of all time was, in fact, based on true events. Have fun sleeping tonight with that information. But if you dare to look further, you will find some interesting and spooky things. This book is actually a novel and tells a similar tale to the movie that was based on it. A spine-chilling account of the real-life exorcism of Roland Dado, a pseudonym as his real identity has never been known to the public, a 14-year-old boy in the 1940s living in Street Louis. The novel was pieced together by Blatty using some anecdotes from the notes of the exorcist involved in that original exorcism, but he created his own story of a mother and daughter living in Georgetown, fighting to save their souls, The Myrtle's Plantation, the true story of America's most haunted house. By Francis Kermine. The Myrtle Plantation tells the true story of a home in Louisiana that claims to be America's most haunted house. Like many great ghost stories, this one claims the origins of some of the evil here are vengeful Native American spirits, given the plantation was built on Tunica burial grounds. As many as 10 murders have been attributed to the grounds of the house, and 12 ghosts are said to be regular haunts of the grounds. Kermin's book explores the dark history of the house and the current sightings now that the plantation serves as a bed and breakfast, a natural history of ghosts, 500 years of hunting for proof by Roger Clark. A Natural History of Ghosts, 500 Years of Hunting for Proof describes the history of hauntings from the lens of an explorer and a skeptic. Clark tracks over 500 years of stories of wayward spirits, hauntings, and a fascination with the occult to tell gripping ghost stories that don't have a clear explanation. You might be surprised to find some of history's most famous players as characters make an appearance in Clark's hunt for the supernatural, including Adolf Hitler and Harry Houdini, to name but a few, The Uninvited, The True Story of the Union Screaming House, by Stephen A. Lachance. A first-hand account of the Union House haunting in Missouri. In it, Lachance recounts how he and his children were the victims of relentless demonic entities in the early 2000s. The family moved into an old home on Cedar Street in Union, Missouri, that had once been a butcher shop, among other things. Despite a warning from the realtor that the house wasn't quite right, the family moved in and quickly found themselves besieged by entities they could not see. Religious iconography in the house was mysteriously defaced and horrifying screaming sounds that would help coin the moniker Union Screaming House began to move. In it, Lachance tells his story and that of the tenant who moved in after he and his family were forced to flee, deliver us from evil, a New York City cop investigates the supernatural. By Ralph Sarchi. The title of this book might ring a bell if you saw the Sony Pictures adaption of Sarchi's memoir, of the same name, that was released a few years ago. Ralph Sarchi was a 17-year NYPD veteran and a devout Roman Catholic who investigated several crimes that he claimed were the result of demonic possession. As a practicing demonologist, he even claimed to have a relic of the true cross that he used during his exorcisms. The film adaptation takes liberties with Sarchi's writings but captures the spirit that drew Sarchi into what he refers to as the work. 